Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am the Metabolic Health Doc and I'm so excited to be with you today. Uh, if you like the content, if you want to heal from metabolic disease and prevent it, this is your channel. Make sure you like and su subscribe because I want to make sure you learn all the things that I'm learning as I uh, continue to learn all the wonderful things about achieving metabolic health. Today's video is really about uh, taking an opportunity to understand our relationship with the American Heart Association, the recommendations they've made, and most importantly, what's the best test to uh, check your heart out to know that you're at risk for a heart attack. So I'm gonna do this in a more of a PowerPoint uh, presentation. I think it's important sometimes that we have slides. So I'll go ahead and share my screen so that you guys can uh, learn everything I have to offer you today. So let's do that right now. And I'm really excited because there's been some developments with the American Heart Association recently that have surprised many of us, particularly in the uh, low carb community. And um, uh, as you can see, uh, they are making recommendations to tell you which test you can use for predicting a heart attack. So that's what this is about. But before we get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this idea of low fat versus uh, low carb. And rather you're talking about reversing diabetes, uh, your risk for heart attack, stroke, dementia, cancer, et cetera, which diet uh, is best for you? So if you think about it, uh, the American Heart Association is a very important organization because most clinicians rely on larger organizations like the American Diabetes Association, the Association of Clinical Endocrinology. And, and what you'll find is that we really depend on what they tell us. So that's important because if you're not thinking outside the box like I do, you may not actually make changes until they say it's okay. So I'm putting this in front of you to remind you that maybe, just maybe, that's not the best source always in the beginning, maybe later, but not always the best source. So when I was on my journey, attempting to decide which dietary pattern I was going to recommend. I was leaning towards low fat. I was a vegetarian for eight years, and I felt that that was the way to go. So when I decided to write my book, Fix Your Diet, Fix Your Diabetes, I had to look at the research so I could quote the research and use that as the foundation for my book. As you can see from this study, it's the SHI study. And, and we usually say uh, the first author's name, the, the top author, and we call the study after their name some uh, sometimes. But as you can see from the study, it was looking at a low-carb Mediterranean and low-fat diet. And when you look at this study, which was actually dated, you know, back a little bit, uh, this study showed that the uh, low-fat diet, Mediterranean, and the low-carb diet all resulted in uh, weight loss, substantial weight loss. But you'll also notice that the low-fat diet was the clear winner. And so this study is what kind of made me pause and say, wait a minute, why are these large organizations recommending a uh, low-fat diet is the best option, or maybe even choosing Mediterranean over low-carb if the studies don't prove that? So I had to look even further, and that's when I, uh, uh, well, first of all, the conclusion of this study is that uh, the Mediterranean and low-carb diet should be effective are alternatives to a low-fat diet. Not that the low-fat diet doesn't work, but there are there, they would be effective alternatives. So here we go. You have all of these studies put together by the Public Health Collaborative. And what they do is they look at primarily randomized controlled trials. And what they found is that the, uh, when it comes to significant weight loss, the low carb diet was the clear winner, 36 to zero. And then for greater weight loss, it was 58 to seven. So, so here you have a scenario where you have to write a book, right? And you're trying to figure out what's, what's the best diet. It was a clear decision for me to go with a low carb diet. Again, recognizing that all diets, all those diets mentioned work, but when you look at low fat, low carb, and even Mediterranean, but it was clear that that's the way I decided to go. Now, the problem is that, and even if you look at the chapters in my book, you'll see that the uh, I mentioned that the uh, glycemic index should be a focus. And all I was saying in that chapter is that uh, eat foods that don't raise your sugar too fast. And that's what the glycemic index measures. And of course, a chapter on fix your fear of fat was mentioned as well. And this was dated 2017. And the American Heart Association made the recommendation 
that we should uh, uh, say it's okay for a low carb diet in March of 2022. So imagine all the patients that I was able to get off medicines, reverse their diabetes, reverse their hypertension. If I had not followed my own research and my own intuition, I would have probably not been able to share that information with these patients and they would have never reversed their disease. So that's why I was saying you got to be careful who you follow. And although we do want to follow the recommendations of these large organizations if they are uh, valid and evidence-based, we don't always want to wait that long to get the information. So who do you trust? Well, my suggestion is that you start looking at doctors who look at the evidence, make decisions and make recommendations, uh, and then you consult your doctor uh, and try to get them to buy in when you learn new information. So one of my favorites, Dr. Kim Berry, uh, wrote Lies My Doctor Told Me, and even his book was written in 2017. And as you can see, one of the lies that he talked about in his book was that fat is not related to heart disease. And so the question is, why did the larger organizations not get the memo as well? Here's another one of my favorites, and that's Dr. Brett Schur. He wrote the book, Your Best Health Ever. He's a cardiologist. I think Dr. Uh, Kim Berry is a family doctor like myself. And Dr. Brett Schur, as a cardiologist, has already uh, been promoting uh, low carb diets for years, way before this March 2022 recommendation from the American Heart Association. And uh, a recent guest on the podcast as well, Dr. Philip uh, Ovadia. Uh, he's a heart surgeon. So now we have a heart surgeon saying that a low carb diet is a perfectly good diet. And you can tell by the images on his book cover uh, that these are diets he recommends. So so it's really important that we pause and, and understand that there are people out there who see evidence, read it, understand it, make sure it's you know the right kind of evidence that would be randomized controlled trials, hopefully. And, and these are the types of uh, clinicians you want to really follow. And, and as you can see, the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, uh, they have a directory of uh, metabolic health trained doctors who understand this. The Low Carb USA, same story. They have a directory. And even the diet doctor has a directory. And what I really like about the diet doctor, they are evidence-based and they really provide uh, guidance based on science. So I just want to put that in your head. I'm not suggesting you don't follow these larger organizations, but you got to understand these are large organizations that take a long time to change how they think. Now, having said that, let's talk about the American Heart Association's uh, position statement and this was the statement where they did allow us to say it's okay to do a low carb diet. So we were very pleased with that. But, but if I, when I read the uh, statement even further, I was able to find additional nuggets that I thought would be valuable for this video. And, and that's the role of imaging studies to determine whether or not you have subclinical cardiovascular disease. That means that you really got some clogged arteries but you don't have any symptoms. And that's really the best time to know, if not before that, so that you can do something about it. So, so let's, let's think about what those options were. A test that I've been ordering uh, for quite some time, our health system now offers it, and it's called the coronary artery calcium test. This is really uh, a CT scan that measures how much calcium-containing plaques are in your arteries, you know, and those are the same plaques that lead to heart attacks. Uh, and your goal is to get a score of a zero. And if you get a score of zero uh, or something close to that, that means you have a low chance of developing a heart attack while a higher score increases the risk. The good thing about this test, although the prices range from, you know, as low as $49, like we have at Advocate Royal Healthcare in our health system, it can be as high as 300 or so. So hopefully uh, the health system or the organizations that you are involved in uh, are actually offering this test at a pretty good price point. And, uh, but, but if they are, I would definitely suggest you consider this test. Uh, if you look at this last paragraph on this slide, it says up to 39% of individuals uh, have a, a zero calcium score result in the study that they did. Now think about that. Uh, these are type two diabetics and 39% have a zero score. And, and what's cool, they're saying thus the absence of coronary artery calcium can reclassify up to a third of patients with diabetes to a low risk category, whereas a higher score may prompt tighter risk factor control, including 
statins, that's cholesterol medicine and aspirin pre uh, prescriptions. This is very important because as you know, uh, statins have side effects, aspirin have side effects. So if you're saying nearly 40% of diabetics who are currently on statins don't need to be on statins, that's huge. And, and although health systems and clinicians may have not gotten this memo yet, this is something that you need to know so that you can go to your doctor. And I'll have a link to this uh, position statement by the American Heart Association. And you now have uh, an argument to make. And that argument is, if I get a calcium score test and my score is uh, not bad looking, it's a zero, it's a 10, it's a very small number, maybe I don't need to take these uh, medications. So that's really important that you share this. This is, a, this is an image of what that test looks like. As you can see to the left, a normal, you see no plaques. The middle one has a little uh, plaque formation there. They consider that moderate. And then to the right is the severe uh, uh, calcification or plaque formation. So, so now you have an idea of what a heart scan looks like. Here's the machine itself. What I like about this machine is that it's a donut. It's a donut that's not like a tube, like an MRI. And I'll show you a picture of that shortly. But you know, most people tolerate this. Most people uh, can handle a five-minute test and they're not completely in a tube. And uh, I think you'll be able to handle it. So, and it's a value proposition. What I also like about this test is that they also have to scan the other things around your heart. So when I get my report back, it'll add, you know, let me know if there's anything going on with the lungs and other surrounding tissues. So for 50 bucks, at least in our health system, it is a value proposition you can't refuse. So this is the second study the American Heart Association talked about in their uh, position statement about which test is best to stratify risk for a heart attack. Now, this coronary artery, uh, basically CT angiography test, also abbreviated CTA, is a test that measures plaques just like the previous test. But unlike the calcium score test, this test, you have to get an injection of contrast material into your blood vessels. And, and, and that's, you know, and then you have to get the CT scan. So, the other disadvantage of this test, although it's a good test, is that you may be looking at a $500 to $1,000 cost for this test. So, so again, uh, something to keep in mind when you're making decisions. Here's an example of what that looks like to the doctor who's going to read this test. And uh, it gives you an eye. You can clearly see that you'll be able to see the cardiac blood vessels quite clearly. And so that's a test that I want you to be aware of. And the, the next test is a, a basically a, a cardiac uh, MRI. Uh, and this is basically an MRI of the structures of the heart. And the cardiac MRI offers a greater contrast and image clarity uh, than a CT scan. Uh, and in this particular example, it does not require use of contrast agents. So that's a good thing. Uh, and uh, so you can actually do some radiation-free perfusion imaging, but the cost, you're looking at, you know, $1,000, uh, $5,000, up to $5,000. So we're talking about some significant money to assess your risk for uh, a heart attack. And here's an example of an MRI scan of the heart. You can kind of see that there will be, you know, ability to see the blood vessels like right in here. You know, there's some, you can see the blood vessels. So it's really a great test to assess your risk. And as you can see, an MRI of the uh, heart using uh, this technology is a little bit more of a tube. So I think for a person who's claustrophobic, this may be a more challenging test. And you also have to be in that tube a little bit longer than that uh, coronary artery calcium score test. So, but again, I, my goal today is to let you know what your options are so that you'll be able to assess which option is best for you. Most of us are familiar with stress testing. So here's an example of an exercise uh, stress test. And as you know, it shows you how hard, you know, how well the heart is working when you're stressed. So in other words, you may be on a treadmill, you may be on an exercise bike, and sometimes they can even inject medicines uh, into your heart, you know, arteries to kind of give you the impression that you're working out and you're not. And, and those tests can be very effective. This test is also not cheap. It's anywhere from a thousand uh, to 5,000. and But it is another option that we need to think about when we're trying to assess. And of course, a very simple image reminding us of what that stress test looks like. And of course, they would have monitors attached to your body as well. And the last test is the uh, cardiac 
positive emissions tomography test, not commonly done. Uh, it's also called a cardiac PET test. This test involves injection, again, of a radio, trans, uh, radio tracer to detect heart disease. Uh, again, I don't order this test often, but it's available. And this test can cost anywhere from $900 to $3,000. So again, there's some cost involved. So, so um, and, and what they find in meta-analyses is that, uh, you know, if you have a normal PET CT, it is very predictive of your chances of having heart disease in a type 2 diabetic. So these tests are very effective. They do help. And here's how it looks. Very 3D-ish, very uh, fancy looking. It's almost like a cartoon, but it, you can clearly see those blood vessels around the heart. And if they have calcium, you're, we would be able to detect that. So, so, so this is the part that was uh, very uh, interesting for me. And this is really what, this is kind of like the, uh, the da-da moment. Uh, so as it relates to cardiovascular screening and type 2 diabetes, you know, there are many imaging tests that can facilitate risk stratification in asymptomatic patients with type 2 diabetes, but there is, there is, you know, there are limited data to support routine screening, you know. Uh, however, a coronary artery calcium uh, test appears to provide the most actionable trigger to lipid lowering and antiplatelet therapy. So that's huge because not only is that a five-minute test that's easy to do and affordable, but what's huge about it is that you mean to tell me if I have a zero score, I may not need to take the cholesterol-lowering drugs or the aspirin. And, and you know, so that's huge because so many people are trying to use lifestyle, but it's hard to get your clinician to not give you medicine when they're being guided to do so by the larger organization. So I thought this was very valuable information. Again, I'll have a link in the, in the, in the comments, in the show notes, so that you'll be able to share this uh, study. I wanted to do a shout out to uh, Ivor Cummings because when uh, this ideal of a coronary artery calcium score test was kind of put in front of us, he was one of the, I would argue, the most active person uh, he's an engineer, by the way, who was promoting uh, the use of this test. So I want to do a shout out to him and the work he's doing uh, in helping us to understand the value of this test. And I also want to do a uh, shout out to the author of uh, this uh, uh, test himself, and that's uh, Dr. Uh, Agustin. And he is the one who actually uh, invented this test. And, uh, and I really appreciate him as well. Here's an image with both of those uh, great guys uh, together with some other team members. And I just wanted to just do a shout out to both of them because I think it's important that we celebrate the people who are helping us to live well. So the, as we conclude this video, I just want to remind you as I share this image, and, I, and this image is important to me because uh, two of the most important men in my life would be my, uh, my stepdad uh, and my father-in-law, both of whom have uh, had issues, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen, uh, with heart disease in the past. And, and it's important that uh, we honor them and understand that the people who uh, we're doing this for is not really for us as much as it's for them. So if you, you know, were fascinated by this information, if you learned something, you had an aha moment, make sure you share this video with other people in your life who are maybe tired of taking statins, tired of taking, taking aspirin, maybe they're type 2 diabetic and they're, they're looking for another way. This may be the way. This may be another opportunity for them to share some information with the clinician that they work with. And so if you, if you like the content in this video, I want to make sure that you um, like and subscribe to this video. And until you hear my voice again, be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest. Have a